Welcome to another episode of Trial Site News. On today's show, we're going to be discussing TV personality anchor Yasmin Fasugian of MSNBC, who revealed that her month-long hiatus from television was due to being hospitalized with severe myocarditis and pericarditis. Her doctors told her it had stemmed from the common cold. However, critics are suggesting that perhaps it had something to do with the mRNA vaccine. We're going to discuss what is going on here. And so, from Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and our episode is starting right now. So, Yasmin Fasugian of MSNBC returns back to the anchor chair of her weekend program this past Saturday. She had been missing in action for quite some time, and she revealed that she had been hospitalized with pericarditis and myocarditis. She made a point to mention that she doesn't smoke. She runs several miles per week, does yoga, doesn't eat meat, and drinks occasionally. As she put it, I'm a pretty healthy person. Yasmin, who is 44 years of age, said that the health scare started back on December 20th of 2022. She apparently began experiencing chest pains that, as she put it, waxed and waned over a period of 10 days, and that they continued to get worse as time went on. By December 30th, they told her she had acid reflux. And yet, one day later, she awoke to severe chest pains and pain in her left shoulder, which led her to believe that she had suffered a heart attack. And so she went to the emergency room. The doctors there diagnosed her with pericarditis, or inflammation of the lining of the heart. They claimed it was caused by a, quote, literal common cold. Now, after she was admitted to the hospital, she spent several days there before she was released on January 4th of 2023. However, Fasugian said that just three days later, she was readmitted to the hospital after feeling her heart, as she put it, flutter like a butterfly. The doctors then informed her that she had developed myocarditis, which is an inflammation of the heart muscle, and so she spent another five days in the hospital. Now, in her segment, Yasmin Vesugian made no mention of the COVID-19 mRNA vaccine. As she put it, it was just the cold that was doing all the inflammation in and around her heart. Now, she brought her physician, Dr. Greg Katz, who is a cardiologist at NYU Langen Hospital, to discuss the growing outcry from the public about claims that more and more people are now suffering from pericarditis and myocarditis. To this, Dr. Katz responded to Yasmin, saying that it could be the season is more virus heavy. Maybe our immune systems are different because we've been masking and social distancing. Nobody knows why this is. But with Yasmin Fasugian's confirmation that she had suffered pericarditis and myocarditis, widespread speculation on social media began that it may have been caused by a COVID-19 vaccine or booster shot. And while she didn't mention her COVID vaccination status on air, we do know that she has previously claimed to have been vaccinated in a Twitter post back in April of 2021. She said the following, We are both vaccinated. That was confirmed before this pick. And we also know that MSNBC has required or mandated its employees get the vaccine prior to returning to work back in 2022. Meanwhile, both the FDA and the CDC acknowledge that myocarditis and pericarditis are potential side effects of the COVID-19 vaccines from both Pfizer and Moderna, although they take great care to stress that it is rare. Even the WHO has got in on this, saying that, quote, very rare cases of myocarditis and pericarditis have been observed following vaccination with the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines. These cases occurred more often in younger men and after the second dose of the vaccine, typically within a few days after vaccination. And they caution that vaccinated individuals should be instructed to seek immediate medical attention if they develop symptoms indicative of myocarditis or pericarditis, such as new onset and persisting chest pain, shortness of breath or palpitations following vaccination. Now, it is also worth mentioning that according to Johns Hopkins University, that while rare, myocarditis can be caused by a, quote, infection in the body, which could include the common cold, influenza, and COVID-19. They also say that bacterial, fungal, and parasitic infections can also lead to myocardial inflammation. And then you have the Myocarditis Foundation, which says that viral infections are the leading cause of myocarditis, but it notes that a wide range of infections, diseases, and substances may cause this condition. Now, both sides of this issue are up in arms. For example, 
The Daily Beast, a far-left news site, ranted about those who are suggesting there is a link to the vaccine with Yasmin Fasugian's condition. They posted an article that said, Right-wingers peddle anti-vax BS about MSNBC hosts health. Here is a sample of what they wrote in the article. They said that Fox News commentator Lisa Marie Booth, who lost out on a potential gig co-hosting The View because she refused to get vaccinated, replied to Travis, quote, We know what's happening. Clay Travis is a conservative radio host who has discussed cardiovascular incidents involving athletes, including the now infamous Damore Hamlin collapse on a Monday night football game in recent past. Anyway, the Daily Beast goes on to say that self-described classic liberal podcaster Dave Rubin, who's repeatedly boasted about being unvaccinated in his never-ending quest for MAGA acceptance, asserted that Fasugian was deliberately lying about her condition to push a narrative. The Daily Beast goes on to note, Anti-vaxxers have long glommed on to the fact that a small number of myocarditis cases have been reported after mRNA COVID-19 vaccinations, and that despite the CDC's claims that the side effect post-vaccination is rare, as the Daily Beast put it, none of this has ever stopped the anti-vax grift machine from churning. And indeed, the story keeps right on rolling along. As we reported earlier this month on this channel, in New Zealand, the Ministry of Health there, as well as University of Auckland, conducted a real-world observational study probing rates of adverse events of special interests associated with a primary dose of the Pfizer-BioNTech mRNA COVID-19 vaccine in the New Zealand population aged five years and up. The dates that they looked at in the study were from February 19, 2021 to February 10, 2022. And here's what the authors said about their study. The incident rate ratio of myocarditis and pericarditis following the first dose was 2.6 people per 100,000 vaccinated, with a risk difference of 1.6 per 100,000 persons vaccinated, and was 4.1 with a risk difference of 3.2 per 100,000 persons vaccinated following the second dose. Meaning that after the second dose, they had an incident rate of myocarditis and pericarditis at 4.1 people per 100,000 doses of the vaccine. They also noted that the highest incident rate ratio was 25.8 people per 100,000, and this was in the 5 to 19 years age group following the second dose of the vaccine, with an estimated 5 additional myocarditis and pericarditis cases per 100,000 persons vaccinated. The study also mentioned an increased incidence of acute kidney injury, otherwise known as AKI, that was observed following the first and second dose of the Pfizer vaccine from 1.6 per 100,000 first dose to 1.7 per 100,000 after the second dose. Clearly, the younger cohort was at a much higher rate, and it is something worth taking a serious note of. And indeed, here in the U.S., Florida's Department of Health has issued guidance for their state suggesting that healthy children, quote, may not benefit from receiving the currently available COVID-19 vaccine and focuses on youngsters with underlying conditions as, quote, the best candidates for the COVID-19 vaccine. Now, whatever the case, and wherever this story leads, rest assured we'll be keeping you updated here. And that, my friends, will bring our episode to a close once more. For more content like this, be sure to check back to this channel daily, Monday through Friday, and for numerous written articles every day, seven days a week, check us out at trialsitenews.com. And as ever always, my friends, thank you so much for joining me on the program today. From Trial Site News, I am Adrian. And I will see you all next time.